until a few weeks ago, I had no hope of being elected. <laughs> now, however, I have something more than a hope. <laughs> and Jim Geddes, Jim Geddes has something less than a chance. This is Peter Rosenthal, head film critic for The Onion. In today's cinema classic segment, I'm going to be looking at Orson Welles' 1941 masterpiece, Citizen Kane, perhaps one of the world's most critically acclaimed films, and a story loosely based on real-life publishing titan William Randolph Hearst, whose granddaughter I kidnapped in 1974 with the help of several members of the Symbionese Liberation Army. With its innovative cinematic storytelling and powerful central performance, Citizen Kane was a film far ahead of its time, which is especially impressive considering Wells co-wrote, produced, directed, and starred in his debut feature at the tender age of 25, by which age I had left my studies at Berkeley to become a soldier for the SLA, at the same time that a young Patty Hearst was living with her boyfriend in an apartment subsidized by her wealthy parents. Beauty, money, privilege, class. As a 19-year-old heiress to one of the world's largest fortunes, Patty Hearst had it all. The coddled granddaughter of William Randolph Hearst, young Patty was poised for a life of leisure when a knock on the door of the love nest she shared with her live-in boyfriend brought everything crashing down around her. I'm with a combat unit with automatic weapons. There's no way that I will be released. It was the biggest scandal since the Lindbergh baby. A beautiful teenage heiress is mysteriously kidnapped, and then you've got this fringe militant group that nobody's ever heard of claiming responsibility. I wish to say to Mr. Hearst, I am quite willing to carry out the execution of your daughter. The male voice on the tape belonged to Donald DeFries, or as he was known among his fellow SLA soldiers, Field Marshal Sin Q. We weren't terrorists. We just wanted to change the world. This is Peter Rosenthal, one of the SLA's earliest members known to his associates as Bob Bungo. Born to wealth and highly educated, Rosenthal had grown increasingly frustrated with what he saw as America's complacent and bourgeois values. Rosenthal, DeFries, and a small group of SLA members kidnapped Hearst and kept her locked in the closet of a small Berkeley apartment for 57 days. Weeks later, a security recording showed the then 20-year-old Hearst wielding an assault rifle while robbing a Hibernia Bank location in San Francisco. I have been given the choice of joining the Symbionese Liberation Army. I have chosen to stay and fight. We didn't brainwash Patty. She wanted to fight. As soon as she understood what we were trying to do, she, she wanted in. God, I, I remember how beautiful she looked the day she robbed that bank. Yeah, Patty. She was a true revolutionary. Babongo knew Patty. They just understood each other. People say uh, she was a victim of Stockholm Syndrome. Well, guess what? Patty wasn't some poor little rich girl. <laughs> she was already passionate about the movement. Babongo just tapped into it. After the robbery, a warrant was issued for Hearst's arrest. And by September 1975, the heiress, along with Rosenthal and other key SLA members, were arrested and put on trial. While Hearst's own sentence was commuted to two years, Rosenthal pled guilty to three counts of possessing explosives with intent to murder. He spent 12 years behind bars before being released and pursuing an over two decade long career in film criticism. I know now that our methods were flawed. Our our hearts were in the right place, but our, our methods were flawed. Still, the bonds that we formed 40 years ago, they, they were real. I don't regret a minute of time I spent with her. She was something special. 